The model for American education was invented about 125 years ago. Students would sit in a classroom, passively receiving a lecture. The bell would ring. They would pass to the next classroom, passively listen to the next topic, and so forth throughout the day. But culture has changed. Schools are beginning to evolve into a different kind of experience for teachers and students. Instead of a single modality, there may be a dozen different ways that teachers and students engage during the day. Makerspace, project-based learning, small group, large group. And we need to begin to think about how we change the learning environment to support these new ways of teaching and learning. Like right here, yeah. Over here, yeah. We almost have to step out of now and into five years from now. Working in Dallas ISD for 37 years, uh, I've never experienced anything like a, a design charrette. What are people doing? How are they engaging with one another? As educators, we've thought a lot about the teaching and learning that happens in the classroom, but we don't often think about the space that those things happen in. I want you to try to shed the, the physical constraints of your current school right now and not let that influence how you might answer some of these questions. The American Architectural Foundation created Design for Learning as a tool or a resource for school districts, school leaders, educators, we're working with schools across the nation, selected by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, to help them devise, conceive, imagine learning environments that are better suited to support the educational plans that they've created. It's still all open, but then you can use all this space for things. So I, I like that idea. I think if you really want to get personalized learning right from all angles, you want to have a space that supports the kind of instructional vision that you're putting forth. There's this philosophy that says there are multiple ways to teach kids and that kids learn in different spaces at different times. And if you don't have that philosophy, then the space redesign kind of seems wasted. In a personalized learning environment, I would expect to see all sorts of different learning modalities going on at, at one time. We can conceptualize and we can theorize, but it's difficult to ground it in the concrete and the realities of the day-to-day -day for teachers. So a design charrette like this makes the vision for personalized learning come to life. Active, they're engaged, and, and when you walk in, you know there's learning going on. Sure. Having teachers, uh, students, community members, to be a part of the process is powerful. <laughs> Everyone was excited. Everyone was like a kid in a candy store. The possibilities were endless. And this can be a retractable wall to where it can be one space to where you can do co-teaching. It got our creative juices going, and you don't get very many opportunities to be pushed in that type of a way. Lots of teachers went back to their classrooms the very next day and started rearranging their furniture in different ways. They started setting up learning zones. Working with these three amazing architects really showed us what we have here. Wow, can we get it started right now? Do we have to wait? It's like waiting for that Christmas morning. You can't wait to open up that package. I can't wait to open up that building and get those kids in there to show what they can do. As we look at well, the next building that we're going to build, we are building that school with form and function in the forefront of what we're doing. Never would have been on our radar before the design charrettes. And AAF really helped accelerate our vision for personalized learning. We need more space. <laughs> Tables versus desks. I don't It was a great three days of digging deep and reflecting and rolling up our sleeves and putting something on paper that we can all be proud of and work towards together. Transforms into the ambulance. I'm actually a little bit sad that it's ending. <laughs> it never even dawned on me that we could go just so much further and really develop a school that not only catered to the curriculum but also catered to the culture. It's time for a new model. And the moments when educators and students understand that they can literally help shape the spaces that they're going to be working in is very exciting and rewarding. Design for Learning is how we learn and where we learn in the 21st century.